In today's COVID-19 pandemic, are nurses doing fine lately? Good day, everyone. I am Jasper John Tupino. And together with me are Alessandro Trista Basas, Connie Catraza, Nika May Villaruel, and Linda Lois Vistar. And together here, we are going to present our research paper entitled Mental Health of Hospital Nurses in COVID-19 Units. For the introduction, in March 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 as a pandemic. It all started in a small province of Wuhan, China, and has brought a wild-scale disruption to every aspect of human life. One of those affected of it is the mental health of hospital nurses all over the world who are working 24-7, sacrificing their health just to take care of COVID patients. A study of Balkan and others, a collective review has been done to similar research studies related to the mental health issues experienced by healthcare workers during COVID-19 pandemic. Similar results show that varying severity of mental health symptoms such as stress, anxiety, depression, which are influenced on different demographic and occupational factors, has developed during the pandemic. The importance of this research is to explore the different situations of hospital nurses and their mental health in different institutions in Bacolod City in the course of the pandemic. The goal is to investigate what are the prevailing mental health issues experienced by Bacolod hospital nurses, coping strategies used, and the different factors associated with it. For a statement of the problem, the study aims to explore the lived experience of hospital nurses and their mental health in COVID-19 units. So for the significance of this study, this study will be beneficial to the following. First, for the healthcare organizations. The result of this study may create an able wider overview with regard to the mental state of the nursing staff in the hospital setting and how it could affect the daily handling of patients in different departments. Second, for the mental health practitioners. This may spark awareness and a better understanding of mental health practitioners regarding how to manage and provide care to mentally and psychologically drained nurses that are exposed to the COVID-19 virus. Third, for the registered nurses. This study may provide adequate knowledge in how the current pandemic affects their profession and work habits, as well as enable them to provide support among other nurses and healthcare professionals that are constantly exposed to the virus. Fourth, for the student nurses. This may benefit student nurses as a way for them to be fully apprised of the current situation and provide awareness and preparation on what to expect in the profession they have chosen. Lastly, for the future researchers. This study may serve as a stepping stone and a basis for future researchers that are interested to further develop and improve this study. Next, for the theoretical and conceptual framework, the models that are discussed in this study are the adaptation model by Sister Calista Roy and the three stages of model change by Kurt Lewin. So in the schematic diagram of the conceptual and theoretical framework of the study, we can see that there's a lived experience of hospital nurses working in COVID-19 units, prevailing mental health issues, coping strategies, different factors that affect the mental health, the state of mental health of hospital nurses working in COVID-19 units. So for our research design, this research study will be using phenomenology research design, and our participants are the hospital nurses in Bacol that are actively working, particularly assigned in a COVID-19 unit, determined by non-probability sampling, purposive sampling, specifically expert sampling. Our participants are classified under the researchers list of inclusion and exclusion criteria as shown in the table. And our total number of participants is six. Research instrument. The researchers will utilize a researcher-made instrument in the study containing two parts. Part 1 will include the demographic data of the participants containing their name, age, sex, educational attainment, and occupation. Part 2 will be the central question and areas to be covered by the researcher related to the lived experience of hospital nurses and their mental health in COVID-19 units. To ensure validity of the interview guide and reliability of the analysis to limit subjectivity, in qualitative research, validity and reliability is tackled through Lincoln and Goba's evaluative criteria. For the data gathering procedure, finding of determined research participants, giving of informed consent stating the nature and purpose of the study through email, briefly state the right of a research participant, creating a Zoom meeting and sending the link to the participant, stating the structure of the interview and the objectives, conduction of the interview, after the interview, show gratitude to the participant, and data processing. For the data analysis procedure, the researchers decided to use the Colizes method for analyzing the data for the results of the study. For ethical considerations, an approval by the Admin and Ethics Committee Chair will be secured, giving of informed consent containing the nature and purpose of the study, right to secrecy and anonymity, and willingly given the decision on whether or not to take part in the research anytime. 
Research participants should not be subjected to any situation that entails harm whatsoever. No bribery or coercion being applied to acquire responses and ensuring protection of data and assuring adequate level of confidentiality. For the results and discussion, this is the demographic data of our research participants. So we have six. First, Sari, she's a psych nurse in a private hospital. Lauer, she's an ICU nurse in a private hospital. Jell, she's an ICU head nurse in a private hospital. Sophie, who is an ICU nurse in a public hospital. John, who, um, who is an ICU nurse in a public hospital. And Anne, lastly, she's an outpatient head nurse and an ob nurse in a public hospital. In our, in our results in discussion, the theme one is understaffing of COVID nurses and unequipped facilities. Among the six research participants, five of them complained and mentioned that the challenges they had working as a COVID nurse was that there were not enough nurses to carry the job of taking care of COVID patients. Increased workload, longer working hours, and the facilities where they're working at is unprepared to receive suspected and positive COVID-19 patients. Moreover, the healthcare system remains unequipped with the necessary weapons to fight COVID-19. This put a toll on their mental health as their workload increases than it was before and that they were unprepared. For the theme two, emotional toll on the nurses and their families. The participants have opened up about their families and own emotional tolls. They share their families' reactions before entering the duty, especially during this pandemic. They're much worried about the contracting the virus both at work and outside of the hospital and bringing it at home among the family members. These challenges have compromised nurses' mental health due to the anxiety and stress that it brought in since it is not only their life who are at risk, but also the family member that awaits them. Theme three is the COVID-19 compensation and benefits of the hospital nurses. The current salary and benefits for nurses here in the Philippines are not enough to sustain their daily needs. Nurses here are under, underpaid, overworked, and unappreciated as experienced by the participants of the study. They are already physically and mentally tired, one thing to raise their moral and interest to work well in taking care of patients of nurses is to properly compensate them for their level of work. Theme four is the coping strategies among the COVID nurses. The participants open up about their experiences and how they cope with the challenges they encountered as COVID nurses in the ward or unit. These challenges lead them to come up with ways on how they would come cope and deal with challenges and difficulties. So this is the significant coping strategies that the participants of the study verbalize. Open communication, sharing thoughts to others, group discussion, venting out, asking for help, unwinding outside the workplace, self-reflection, self-discovery, and learning new things. And lastly, mental health issues, anxiety, and fear. All of, all of the participants have opened up on how each of them experienced anxiety and fear before entering the duty, during shift, and even after their shift ends. What these COVID nurses experience on a day-to-day -day basis is something that compromises their mental well-being since as soon as they enter the COVID unit, they put their life online, becoming word if they would bring the invisible enemy onto their household and risk the health of their loved ones, even risking themselves in developing mental health disorders if worse comes to worse, brought by fear and anxiety. Conclusion, there are different factors that could affect the mental health of the COVID nurses. These are the understaffing, unequipped facilities, emotional toll from their families and themselves, and their compensation and benefits. With these factors contributing, the participants claim that the mental health issues that they experience are anxiety and fear while fighting the invisible enemy. Different coping strategies used by the research participants are totally evident, which positively means that they are able to fight back against their problems and these mental health issues that they experience. For the recommendation, healthcare organizations and the government must assure quality workplace for the nurses and protect their welfare, provide adequate supplies and resources, proper compensation and benefits, and continuous education and training for nurses to provide quality care to the patients. Mental health therapy and counseling as a service by mental health practitioners must be provided for nurses as a way to address their problems or concerns. Registered nurses should take care of themselves and watch out for their own well-being. Student nurses should seek further education and awareness of their own psychological well-being in order to achieve better understanding and preparedness as featured registered nurses. Future researchers should conduct more studies about this matter, especially quantitative studies, since it will be a great help to widen the view on this topic about the mental health status of hospital nurses during the COVID-19 pandemic. For utilization, a copy will be endorsed to the USLS College of Nursing upon completion of the study as a requirement for NRS2. The research data will also be available to serve as basis for the DOH and healthcare organizations for the following, developing and improving policies, 
programs and services that will benefit the welfare of registered nurses in Bacol City, Philippines. For our references, For the acknowledgement, first of all, we would like to express our deepest gratitude to our research professors, Dr. Sheila M. Trajera, Ms. Christine A. Condes, and Ms. Dora M. Ontiveros for guiding us throughout nursing research and sharing their ideas and expertise in order to create this research study. To the panel board members for giving thoughts, advices, and ideas for the improvement of the study. To the research participants for accepting our invitation to be participants of the study and for openly sharing their experiences about the topic being explored. To our parents, for the genuine love, for giving support and encouragement to continue our studies. And lastly, to God for giving us the wisdom, strength, support, and knowledge in exploring things, for the guidance and helping us surpass all the trials that we nursing researchers encountered, and for giving us motivation to, to pursue this research. Without them, this study would not be possible. That would be all. Thank you for listening. <laughs>